We Gather Together by Wendy Pfeffer. During early autumn in the northern part of the earth, chickmunks pack their cheeks full of seeds to store in underground burrows. Red fox pups hunt for rodents and fruit to eat. They bury leftovers to dig up when food is scarce. Beavers store twigs and sticks under water to chew when ice covers the pond. So they're all busy getting ready for winter. And there's that little chickmunk right down there. As the sun appears lower in the south sky each day, the sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Days grow shorter, the nights cooler, and the growing seasons end. Time to prepare for winter. Black bears gobble honey, grubs, fruits, and roots, building layers of fat for the cold days ahead. Here's the bear. It's nice claws. People pick purple grapes, yellow squash, orange pumpkins, and crisp red apples. They husk corn, gather nuts, rake cranberries, and enjoy the harvest season. Really busy. See, I like that big truck. Because that big truck takes, see the farmers keep some of the food for themselves. And what? They grow so much that trucks take it to the store. And that's how we find it in the store. But today there's a little need for them to stockpile food for winter, as animals do. Ships, trucks, and cargo planes transport it from ports of parts of the world where fruits and vegetables are still growing. When it's winter in the northern hemisphere, food is brought in from the southern hemisphere where it's summer. So see, it's even brought in by plane up here too. See the airplane? Wow, look at this. Okay, here's our hemisphere going up here. So here's the fall equinox right here for autumn. You can see the shadow here. So here nights get longer, then days get, get shorter. Time to harvest. Winter solace, the, the shortest day with the longest sunshine. And that really does happen. Winter nights, longer than days. Days get longer. Spring is coming. See, we go around. Here's spring. Day and night equal. And then spring here. Days longer than nights. Days getting longer. Seedlings sprout. Oh, the seedlings sprout. It means like the vegetables and flowers. Flowers are coming up. And here it is summer. The longest day with the most sunshine. It's summer here. Days longer than nights, nights getting shorter, crops grow. So it's a whole season on the earth that rotates around the sun. Different seasons are caused by the tilt of the earth as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts towards the sun, the earth gets lots of sunshine and it's summer there. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less summer and it's winter. Between summer and winter, around September 21st, the sun crosses the equator and shines equally on both the northern and southern parts of the earth. On that day, the northern part of the world, summer ends and autumn begins. Day and night have equal hours all over the world. For many, the autumn equinox signals a time to harvest crops. Each crop has its own growing season. Most seedlings sprout when the cool spring rain and thrive under the warm summer sun. Sunshine helps the plants leaves make the food that is necessary for the plant to grow. When autumn arrives, days are cooler, plants can no longer make the food they need, 
and the growing season ends. Time to gather in the crops. Fruits and vegetables that ripen by autumn must be harvested before winter's freezing weather destroys them. So here they've got everything coming up in the spring, summer, and then autumn is when they start putting them in the baskets. Look at here, that's a tall apple tree. It's getting all the apples down. 300,000 years ago, no one knew how to plant seeds to produce a bountiful harvest. Cave dwellers picked berries, collected nuts, dug roots, and gathered wild plants. Winters were hard for them, but they had to live on what they gathered and stored in the fall. So look, they're just gathering all sorts of things that they can store. This was people a long time ago. It says 300,000 300, years ago. Long time ago. About 10,000 years ago, where Syria and Turkey are today, tribes learned to grow wheat and barley from seeds. How exciting it must have been to plant one seed and produce a stock of with many. 8,000 years ago in Egypt, people discovered the warm climate was perfect for farming. The Nile River provided water, and once each year, its floodwaters deposited rich, black, fertile soil on both sides. Plants grew in abundance. So look, they had the water and the sun and the seeds that they planted. Gradually, farming spread to Asia. About 5,000 years ago, people grew food in a crescent-shaped area where Iraq is now. The Tigris River and small streams that fed, fed it turned valleys into a fertile crescent of rich farmland. Each autumn, in many lands, Men, women, and children work all day and even at night under the moon of a bright harvest moon. They cut rice, thrashed wheat, and gathered bundles of barley. A good harvest meant plenty of food to eat in the, in the fall and more to store for the days when food was scarce. Time to rejoice and have fun after hard back breaking work. It's working by the full harvest moon there. Over the centuries, people celebrated plentiful harvest and passed down traditions at, at different times, in, in different places, and in different ways. All over the world, harvest celebrations from the past are still being carried on today. Jewish families have gathered together at harvest time for over 3,000 years to celebrate Shakok. Today, these eight-day festival of Thanksgiving, they have palm, myrtle, and willow branches, then point them in the direction to show that God is everywhere. Some Jews build a hut called a shakok, like the ones farmers once stayed in to be near their crops during the busy harvest. They decorate the huts with fruits and vegetables, then invite their friends and family to share food and friendship. People in southern India have celebrate Pogal, a four-day rice festival. For over 2,000 years, on the first day, they decorate their front doors with rice flour designed designs and give thanks to the grain gods. On the second day, they cook Pogal, a sweet rice pudding, and offer some to this to them. See, they're putting the stuff on the doors over the doors, and there's the rice. On the third day, they honor their cattle to thank them for pulling the plows. On the fourth day, family and friends gather over river river banks to dance and enjoy a beautiful feast, including, of course, freshly harvested rice. The people of the Japan have rice festivals for about 2,000 years. In spring, girls dressed in kimonos plant rice while music musicians play bells, drums, 
and flutes. In summer, they hold a lantern festival to express their joy as the rice ripens. When fall comes, they celebrate the harvest with parades and a dragon dance. During their moon viewing ceremony, people sing while watching shadows on the fall moon. Many think the shadows show a rabbit and make a rice cake, make rice cakes. For over 700 years, Nigerians have held a fall festival to give thanks for yams. The first crop harvested on the night before the festivities begin, the old wrinkled yams are thrown out. The next day, new yams are offered to, the, to everyone in appreciation for the harvest festival. Dancers wear raffia skirts and makes masks that portray turtles, lizards, trees, and the sun or moon to celebrate a cycle of nature. Hundreds of years ago, the English believed that the spirit of their wheat lived in the last bundle they cut. In each field, they twisted it into the shape of a doll. Since they, since they call wheat corn, these dolls were called corn dolls. See right here. They were, the, they were hung in barns or churches during the winter. They plowed back into the earth in the spring to ensure a good harvest in autumn. People still make corn dollies just for fun. See, they hang them in the barn there. And they save those for spring to put back into the earth. Pilgrims from England arrived in America in the fall of 1620, too late to plant crops. The winter, that winter many died from hunger and sickness. When spring came, the surviving pilgrims sowed wheat seeds. A Native American tribe, the Wapogians, showed them how to plant maize or corn. The following autumn, the harvest was fruitful the pilgrims planned a celebration to share this blessing. Wapango's men hunted and killed five deer to bring to the to the feast. So there they are, they're out there hunting. The pilgrims stayed busy too. They bought, brought ducks, geese, turkeys, fish, and oysters. Women prepared cornbread and cranberries while children turned meat on spits over an open fire. Games and feasting lasted three days. Bountiful harvests have been celebrated since earliest times. People all over the world still celebrate a fruitful year of farming with fun feasts and festivals. They enjoy corn, rice, yams, apples, pumpkins, cranberries, and other fruits and vegetables of the harvest season. Autumn, with its brilliant colors and delicious gifts of nature, are for friends and families at a time to gather together and give thanks for all their blessings. I hope you enjoyed the book.